I would like to tell you people a little bit about Randy, Dr. Short, that is. At 52 years, Dr. Randy Short has had an interesting life. He is a descendant from European, African, and indigenous American nobility with roots from Denmark, England, South Africa, Nigeria, and Senegambi. Son of a husband and wife ministerial team, Reverends Dr. Stephen and Betty Short, and the sibling to Stephen Joseph. He survived a series of near-death experiences in his early childhood and grew up in segregating schools in the predominantly white Fairfax County, Virginia. His formative years were shaped by encounters with racism, poverty, Pentecostalism, came into his own during his high school years and went on to earn a, a collegiate degree from Harvard University, Harvard University and the University of Virginia. Dr. Randy Short is in Washington, D.C., native a scholar, historian, human rights defender, social commentator, anti-eugenics advocate, freelance journalist, writer, and social action, social justice ministry affiliated with the Christian Church of American Churches. Washington, D.C., representative for the Black Autonomy Network Community Organizer, Black Agenda Reports, Judicial Justice Movement, and African American for Human Rights Conference. In 2011, Short twice accompanied the Honorable Cynthia McKenney to Libya and informed an excellent researcher and speaker. Short is regularly featured on FM, AM, blog radio programs nationally. Since 2011, Short has been a regular commentator on Press TV, Al Alam, El Teha News, Atlantic Television News Services, and RT, Abby Morton's Breaking the Set, Voices of America, Portuguese Africa, and so many others. Randy, how are you this evening? Your, your bio is incredible, but sir, I am honored to have you on this show. How are you this evening, Randy? I am great, Bill. I'm great. I wanted to start. Jimmy and Joanne Moriarty uh, suggested that I have Dr. Randy Short. May I call you Randy, sir? Yes. Thank you. They suggested I have him on the show, and they tell me what a wonderful man he is. And last night we spoke on the phone well past my bedtime. And it's just another case. If I had recorded that conversation, I could have used it for the show this evening. I am most interested in your adventure to Libya with Cynthia McKenney, sir. Okay. The adventure should have happened two years earlier. Someone kept breaking into my house or something. So I lost. I put my passport and ID under a mattress at my granny's house across the street back in Tennessee. And forgot it was there. And when Cynthia and them wanted me to go to Libya to meet Gaddafi in 2009, I couldn't find my passport. About a year or so later, when I moved to Maryland, my godbrother visited the house that we had boarded up and found when they lifted up the mattress, my passport and my IDs. So I was lucky. Later that year, uh, Cynthia got it so that I could go to this conference where Gaddafi wanted to bring all the different people together that were black to figure out what we could do to have a better world. And on January 17th, uh, Gaddafi warned us that there were going to be a lot of invasions in Africa. They may even come and kill him. But everything seemed nice in Libya, right? We stayed in, in, in Tripoli. The country looked like it was developing. They were spending money building all these new apartment blocks, all these developments. You didn't see anybody hungry, nobody homeless. That everything was clean. And when I got back, all of this insanity occurred. And I was thinking, did I miss something? I mean, I've got a pretty critical eye. Trust me, growing up in this country as a, as a person who was black, you notice things because, you know, there's so much going on. I, I just didn't understand what was happening as a result of that. I remember when I arrived in Libya, they had just gotten rid of the government in Tunisia under Ben Ali, and everyone was talking about WikiLeaks. And so when I got back in January 2011, we were in Libya for about 10, 11 days, I checked WikiLeaks for Libya, and there was one cable talking about a revolution that they were trying to do against Gaddafi. It was called Down and Dirty and Derna. 
and it's still up there. I think it was done about 2008. And it was an American who is either a State Department or CIA person trying to recruit people, uh, radicals, to overturn the Gaddafi government. Because nobody was talking about this particular cable, and there was fighting going on in Libya, I shared it with the gentleman who works the alternative media, whose name is Sam Husseini. And Sam called me back and says, Randy, this is incredible. Nobody's talking about this. Can I say that you sent it to me? I said, Sam, I'm not it. I don't speak Arabic, but if you want, fine. And so as a result of that, all these people called me to do interviews. And I kept telling them, well, that what we're seeing in Libya isn't true. Uh, it, it can't be based on the fact that there's some subversive movement to get rid of Gaddafi as, after they've disarmed him. This is a classic way of taking down a government. You get him to give up his arms, to do this, to, and all the while you're working to pull the rug from under him. Now, the one thing that I did tell Sam, so Sam, I don't know who wrote this cable, went to Libya again in June, late June, with Cynthia for us to be a voice of people that really say what was going on in Libya, what really was happening. And, of course, we know that uh, there were people who wanted to sell drugs, want to smuggle cigarettes, people wanted to steal the oil, they wanted to steal the water taken out of the Nubian aquifer. They wanted to, the Italians, of the, uh, the French, certain American oil people, Chase Bank stole billions of dollars. Just They wanted to loot the country, steal the gold, do all of that. And, of course, two of the culprits of this were uh, two of my least liked politicians, one of them, Barack Obama, who attended Harvard the same three years as I, and I couldn't stand it then, okay? And, of course, I just hate Hillary Clinton, okay? Hate, 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 hate Hillary Clinton. And I don't like her husband either. In fact, he needs to get some blistex. His nose is too <laughs> and, and, and And Libya, when we were there the second time, we went to the hospitals. We saw people who had been bombed with what appeared to be fragmentation weapons. We were even there. In fact, I believe we were exposed to depleted uranium. You know, my sense of smell has never been the same since I went to Libya the second time. In fact, when I came back from Libya, I would have these incredible nosebleeds. I could sneeze, and I'd have a pool of blood in my hand and, and paper towel. And that went on for several weeks after I left Libya. Everything that was happening in Libya was, was terrible. Uh, what American people didn't see was that there were millions of people marching saying that they supported Gaddafi. The mantra was Muammar, Libya, Abbas. Muammar and Libya is all we want. It's how that translates roughly. They had a march in Tripoli of like uh, basically close to two million people. If it's a country of six million people, you get two million people out the street. It would be like 100 million Americans marching for Trump. And yeah, we know uh, the, the Hillary method of destroying a country. They, First, destroy, they destroy every place. They, she is a cancer. Obama's a cancer. I, I just, I mean, he's a Muslim. He's not really a Christian. That birth certificate. I don't know why uh, Trump was forced to apologize for that. But I'm black. My birth certificate from 1965 reads that I'm Negro. My mother's birth certificate read that she was colored. My uh, great-grandfather applied as a mulatto. The, uh, the government marked him as Latino or something, but they never put African down. Obama is the only person I've met or heard of in my life who's an American citizen whose race is listed as African, which makes no sense because I have friends from Egypt who are as dark as I am, who are classified as white because North Africans are counted as white in our census, which means African is not a race. There's no way that that birth certificate is accurate by the classifications alone. All the other stuff that uh, Sheriff Arapayo, God bless him, they did, went beyond the point. Fundamentally, there's no such thing as African being a race unto itself says how America classifies people. So I don't like the birth certificate, and I agree with Trump. There's something wrong with it. I'm sorry. Don't get me started on Obama. I shoot. Yeah, or yeah. Hillary. And we know Hillary's method is 
first you rape the country of all its wealth and then you finance those that are going to destroy the, the country with their own wealth. Sure. And, and then send your foundation in to steal the money that, that's brought in to help them. Going back to Libya real fast, I did interviews over Pacifica and many other places, and the people really got angry with me. I was trying to say to them, uh, Gaddafi has flaws, but the people like him. Uh, you don't have the right to remove him or whatever they were doing. I got into trouble. They even had people in the WPFW, they had people coming and try to lie against me. Says, you know, I'm not paid to tell anyone this. I'm telling you the truth. In fact, I was doing one show with this really stupid woman named Vera. And Vera's own assistant, because they hadn't studied, they were just so busy, I guess they were paid to be against Libyans. Her own assistant began to read and check out what I was saying was true, and she got mad. And I told her, why would I come and lie? I mean, I don't want to lie about anything. I don't want the people to get killed. Libya's a disaster. It's a stain on America. All of those weapons are now in Syria. They're in the hands of Boko Haram. They've killed over 15,000 people in Nigeria. They're killing them in Cameroon, and Niger. Those weapons have gotten to the Central African Republic and, and, and Sudan. This is, this, these, these people are killing Christians. They're murdering people in, in Mali. This is horrible. What Obama, who, who's used that peace prize to beat the hell out of black people. I wish the white folks would take it back. In fact, if y'all can work that out, being a different ethnic group, if there's a certain white folks line you can call and get the thing taken back, could y'all please make that call for me? Take it away from him. He doesn't need it. He um, never deserved it. No, he, no, he never deserved it. In fact, if they did make a peace prize for Obama to be a man bent over, he'd probably like that better. Anyway, <laughs> well, ask me. don't ask me my opinion about him. I'm going to be here. <laughs> well, we pretty much all have the, the same opinion of, okay. of mm -hmm. Mr. Obama. Give me, we're talking about the Mariottis. You know, what happened, when I got back the first time from Libya, I reached out to my former pastor and former congressman, Walter E. Fontroy. I called him and told him, don't go to Libya. It's a setup. Hillary is going to uh, get you. Please don't go. Please, I, Obama won't help you. Don't go. I couldn't, no one wanted to talk. When you have our, our sort of awareness, Bill and Joy and Star, a lot of times people treat us like we're crazy for reading or thinking. I could not get through to warn him that his life would be in danger. And then when I came back the second time, I, we got back in July of 2011, I heard that Fawn Troy had left, and I said, oh, my God, I hope nothing bad happens to him, but I felt something would. I got interviewed by Russia Today's Arabic channel, and I, they thought, I guess, whoever it was, I was going to be like, opposite, I was going to be in favor of U.S. policy, because I'm black, that I have to go along with Obama. Are you kidding me? I just tore into Obama and the U.S. policy and the no good Democrats in particular, one of the little idiots, a little pumpkin headed one called John Lewis. You know, the one I mean, he's, oh. he's had he's had a bunch of vodka and Red Bull when he's talking. He has hepatitis C, by the way. I hope he's cured. Now, John Lewis <laughs> is the one that sings more blues than B.B. King about how white people beat him up in the 60s. Oh, yes. I wish they did. Stop. I'm so sick of hearing him. He needs to get a toupee and, 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 and something else to talk about. Honestly. Tell him I said it. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Maxine Waters has made me very angry. When the people have poison water loose in their homes in Flint right now, where is she? She could take her James Brown looking hairdo up there and speak up for Instead of talking about impeaching Donald Trump, I mean, you had a black president for eight years. He didn't do anything for us. And you're mad. You didn't get anything because nobody asked him for anything. Can you imagine if your dad owns a bank or someone in your family owns a bank and you won't ask them for anything? And then eight years later, someone else becomes a bank president and you're angry? Screw you. Honestly. 
And if he, wasn't, if he wasn't for us, you should have been giving him hell for eight years. They gave Bush hell for eight years, which is okay. They should have given Obama hell when he didn't do anything. Even this Obama stuff, I mean, it's good. It's been good to me in D.C. But the Obamacare stuff's going to implode. Back to Moriarty. <laughs> so, don't, don't bring up that, man. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I remember the night Trump won. I laughed for five hours. Me and my friends were up until five in the morning dancing. Uh, believe it or not, there was some black folks that party when, when Trump won. <laughs> Yay! And I sing all the feminists cry on the news. That was, you know, just thought it gives us God, please. I wish Trump could run again and win just to see Rachel Maddow, who looks like Fonzie. <laughs> I mean, Henry Blinkler, I thought, I mean, maybe Henry Blinkler wanted a career change. You know, everybody said, like, maybe there's a woman inside him. I don't know. Let me tell you. Um, uh, and Wolf Blitzer, remember they were trying to hold up the count for Trump. They were just doing everything they could to, to not give Trump the thing. That's like, you know, I mean, it was declared in Japan and we're still waiting for CNN. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, even the people in Africa knew. They don't even know where they are and they knew that Trump won. <laughs> yeah, did. I was up till 3.30 in the morning, laid down and got up about an hour later and went to work from the energy of knowing that Hillary was not my president. Yes, well, that's, look, I wish Bill wasn't our president. Well, let me go back to living real fast. When I did the Russia Today show, I gave Obama so much hell until Gaddafi's son in Niger saw me and says, oh, my God, there's an American that's black <laughs> that, 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 that thinks Obama's a hell, but you know what? And so they had some people contact me, and that's how I met James and, and Joanne. Because I said, my God, there's somebody that's American that's not going to lie. I couldn't care a damn about the color of the president if they're doing evil. Okay? This is the thing about America. Who kills most black folks? Of course, I don't like the racial terrorists. I don't like the guy who stabbed the kid at the uh, University Park in, in Maryland. I don't like the kid that shot at the people in the church in, in South Carolina. I don't like the guy from Baltimore that stabbed the person in New York. I don't like the cops that shoot people because they're Klansmen in blue uniforms. However, who's killing most black people? It's another stupid so-and-so um, coon who's a punk who's afraid to really go somewhere where someone has a real television and some real money and stocks and bonds so they know they can kill other black folks because they're little internalized races. They kill blacks because they know that the cops don't really want to stop them. That's a bigger worry to me. Uh, criminal black gun criminals than racial terrorism, although I don't like either. You get where I'm coming from? Absolutely. And you mentioned last night that Obama gave Chicago a bundle of money to make up for all his mm, past transgressions. He made a, a bundle? I mean, really? You paid $8 million for a house and you give $2 million for a city where unemployment for black youth is near 100%. It's a wonderful start. Why don't you ask your fat girlfriend, Oprah, to give you another 20? Really put some money on the table. You want to talk about a group of greedy pigs, successful black people. They disgust me. They bitch and complain about racism and injustice. And when they get wealthy, they turn their backs on blacks faster than a Klansman whose robe is on fire. It's <laughs> ridiculous. In fact, ask her why she stole Greenleaf from Jemison, my friend's buddy. She's a thief. And yeah. I liked her better when she was fat. She was nicer. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. It, it, we mentioned earlier before the show what a crazy world it was. And Randy said, it's not that crazy. It could be a lot worse. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine that. No, I don't, I'm doing my very best not to. I'm trying to <laughs> yeah, imagine a better star, world. We're on the same ship. Yep. Yeah, yep, we're all yep, looking yep. for solutions. It's made every McDonald's have to have a Planned Parenthood outlet. <laughs> really oh, my goodness. Horrible. First of all, the Congressional Black Caucus used to be about something. Sort of like feminine products. When you first put them in, you know, they're all right. But at this point, you need to change them. <laughs> they, oh, God. When it's been too long. I mean, really, that's how I feel. I mean, what they're useless. Maxine Waters aside from needing some Botox and a real agenda for her constituency. 
The reason she's making all this noise is because of Latinos. So she supports the uh, open borders. Now outnumber blacks, and she she doesn't speak Spanish. How long she thinks she's going to have a seat? I mean, they're going to be playing what? Uh, what's that thing called? With uh, the chairs? What's again? Musical you know, chairs. Play, play musical chairs for salsa music. Guess who's going to be standing up this time? Probably <laughs> Maxine. Okay. John Lewis, I already did him. Aside from being uh, looking like a, a meatball that lost the spaghetti, he's useless. <laughs> John Conyers has been in for forever talking about reparations. Hell, if he's really concerned about reparations for black people, he should take a cut in his salary and give some of it to the people in Detroit. I mean, or, or give some of the people in Flint. You've got these useless people who claim they represent black folks. And they're all living great. I mean, you can't name anything that they've done. I mean, look, first of all, Trump won. Hillary lost, okay? They're following this alcoholic scarecrow called Nancy Pelosi. And the only thing she's interested in is LGBTQ stuff. I mean, frankly, we know that they're black gay people because they all go to jail. So, I mean, so what? What about jobs and, and, and Obama? I mean, all of these people are useless. They don't do anything. They've had eight years to do something. They don't do anything. They couldn't speak up for Flint when they were militarizing the police. Like half of the blacks voted for the cops to get machine guns and tanks. Who are these people? They're monsters. And, uh, and the one, Corrine Brown, the one down in Florida, uh, Bill, the one that yeah. went Dr. Seuss hats that was stealing all the money that she said she's giving the black kids. I mean, exactly. God, these folks. It's first and foremost, yeah, white politicians steal more, but they seem, at least they steal enough and they don't get caught. I mean, the black folks, I mean, they're like the shoplifter in a closed circuit camera store. I mean, what? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're just dumb. Don't steal. If the country's unfair and they're targeting you, why be corrupt? If they're gunning for you, dummy, then be straight-laced. Or don't go into public life. God, I mean, sometimes, you know, you just wish you could get one of those Nerf baseball bats and go up to the office and just whack the hell out of them for a few hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't say I'm going to hurt someone. I'm not going to do that because I believe in nonviolence. But just... To get the point of like Sheila Jackson Lee, I mean, look at her. First and foremost, she looks like the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland that stayed in the tanning spa too long. Okay, <laughs> her, she gets money from terrorists. The uh, 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 Mujahideen Al Qaq, the uh, MKO that kills people in Iran, give her money. I mean, come on, what what does she do? What do these people do? Uh, if it's true, and I think, yeah, we got a real racial problem in this country, there are like 40 plus of them and they can't get anything through. You can't succeed. Get I was, out. I was going to say, are they role models for the blacks? For when welfare was perpetual, yes. Now that there's work, welfare to work, the people on welfare are more advanced than the Congressional Black Caucus. They think they have a job for life. I mean, like I said, Maxine Waters is making all this noise against Trump because she supports open borders to the extent where black folks or U.S. citizens get thrown out of public housing for illegal aliens to have housing. And those folks aren't voting for her. So the next time they play political musical chairs to a salsa beat, she's going to be standing up and the chair is going to go to someone else. The same way a Latino has the chair that belonged to Wrangell, although Wrangell was a black Puerto Rican who would never admit it. Now you have a Dominican who's corrupt, who's more corrupt than Wrangell. So they went from a, a an Afro-Latino that did, that, that did some corruption that got caught to one who's even more corrupt <laughs> that admits to being Afro-Latino. Oh, my God. What are these people doing? Hank Jackson or Johnson, whatever his name is, the one that replaced Cynthia McKinney down in Atlanta, who has hepatitis C, who's an idiot. No, he told Cynthia McKinney the reason that he was running for Congress, it was a, 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 an economic opportunity, not because he's going to serve anybody. The, the one from Philadelphia, the one with the name that sounds like he's in the PLO, Shaka Fatah, who's an AH, okay, he got busted. I mean, really, you're going to sit up and tell people about prejudice and discrimination 
And then you're going to take money from the very same people that you call prison to discriminate. And then you're surprised you're going to jail. Hello? Be consistent. <laughs> if you're going to make everybody white the devil, why would you take their money? If they're backstabbers and hypocrites, don't you think if they're bribing you that they'll make a deal when the government comes and they'll end up using white privilege? So you say they have, they won't go to jail and you'll need to invest in KY jelly along with coffee and other stuff. <laughs> and all I'm going to say to you, I mean, and he's, he's just the principal. I mean, he's a liar. Okay. What most people right. don't know is that Obama was afraid to go back to Chicago. Even when he did his farewell address, it looked like he was speaking to an audience in Iceland. They didn't have any black people there because they're afraid black folks would throw some bricks at him. The white American public is not allowed to see what because we would have some points of convergence if you knew how many of the things you see, we see too. So you have certain people like you have the CNN black people up there. They'll never have someone like me up on there because, you know, I would go off. We can't stand some of these people. I'm looking at that guy, Al Green. First of all, he doesn't he's not the one with the gold records. The congressman that's from Dallas. Remember in McKinney, Texas, when the cop attacked the kids at the pool party and the guy almost dis disconnected the girl's spine for no reason at all. Yes. Yeah. Where in the hell was Al Green? Thank you. I'm after Trump. Was it drunk? Uh, what's the patron, the patron saint of many bars and happy hours that <laughs> Nancy Pelosi put these people up? Notice all the black folks are like her running dogs. None of them have dignity. None of them speak up for any issue. The water's poison in Flint. The water's poison in New Orleans. The water's poison in Detroit. The water's poison in D.C. The water's poison in Baltimore. It's poison all over the country, and particularly in areas where people of color. Don't you think? I, I don't think it's radical to think that the water should be safe to drink. I don't think that that's anti white, that they would fear white backlash to say the water should be safe, right? Exactly. Okay, and yeah. that, 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 forgive me, that jackass. This is what's upset me. I believe if you and I, a couple of us could talk to Donald Trump about the water, I'd do a good Donald Trump imitation. He would say something like, you would have come to me with the proposal about the water and everybody's got to drink water. I agree with that. I mean, I drink water. <laughs> and she likes, she likes seltzer water, but. We're going to put an executive order and make certain that the water for Americans is safe to drink because this is the greatest country. What you say? Isn't this a great country? Shouldn't we have safe water to drink? Well, as your president, your water is not going to be poisoned anymore. If you took a plan to Trump, I believe he's a businessman. He'd think about it. Why don't those idiots in the Congressional Black Caucus truly sit down and think about having a conversation with Trump? If, in fact, he can deal with Amarosa, who I went to school with, oh, my God, Amarosa can be a headache. I'm telling you, a big one of those uh, Costco-sized bottles of ibuprofen. <laughs> if he can deal with Amarosa, he can deal with the Congressional Black Caucus. She is difficult when she wants to be. And she's got it's more the, difficult since she got the that tampons. Situation. Oh, my God, she wasn't that big. <laughs> With we school together. It looks good on her. I'm not going to take it. You were mentioning that uh, when the Black Caucus was going to meet Trump and there was to be a, a 59 page document. It was like 30 pages. Well, they didn't share it with anybody else. In fact, they just threw it at Trump like he was, it was a syllabus for the first day of class. And I'm thinking, you idiots, why didn't you, first of all, come in with something with bullet points? You should have given that to the press secretary or whatever, and they could see, show what the Congressional Black Caucus wanted. Instead, what they didn't ask Obama for because he's black. Doesn't that sound racist? You didn't ask the black person for anything. The minute the white person shows up, you want all this stuff? Excuse me? Okay. It's fair. Where was their plan for Obama? Okay? I'm very proud to be black. I'm militant, but I'm fair. If you didn't ask Obama... What the hell do you look like demanding it from Trump the first few days? Hmm? And, and, Hypocrites. And, uh, Cummings. In fact, he has the right last name because he gets around. Uh, the one from Baltimore. <laughs> he run from Trump. As bombed out as Baltimore is, he should be camped out on the front lawn to see what kind of monies he could get for his city. But 
Nancy Pelosi. I mean, who is she? She's the daughter of a segre- last segregationist Democrat mayor of Baltimore. Is that why the black folks, I mean, literally eat the, the offal out of her rear end like it's manna from heaven? What has she yeah. done for anybody? In fact, she ha- doesn't look like she's gone and gotten a facial or her hair done. She doesn't take care of herself. I mean, when you look at her, she looked like she's been embalmed by the uh, by the <laughs> mini bar on the airplane she travels on. She looks like Bob Denver got uh, <laughs> sex reassignment surgery. I mean, wow. give her a boof. Give give Gilligan some big hair, and it looks like Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> she does look like a crib keeper. I think Gilligan would be smarter. <laughs> Children don't have mothers and fathers, that male is female. For example, can you believe how much time we spent on where someone can piss? Pardon my language. First of all, I don't trust men enough to be in a women's restroom, okay? I'm a man. I know how my mind works. I'm a, a person that believes in God. If you put me in a restroom, woman will look really attractive. I know my eye would be at like the 300. They would be at 180 degrees looking at the corner to try to steal a look. Okay. Just keep me in there with ugly guys. It's smelly. We tinkle everywhere. Let us stay. I mean, and folks are still trying to get it on in there. The gay folks do. Keep the men out of the women's restroom. In fact, how dare them? I mean, the women's room, one of the few things that women get in this world. They're not enough restrooms for women. Now they're going to come and take that. Yay, yes. And, yes, and come on. That inclusion and freedom. And, and says that's who? a rape. It Did is. Ask the women about that. I don't think so. And Obama and stupid Nancy Pelosi. I heard she spent a hundred thousand dollars drinking booze on airlines. Do you realize how much that is a day? If she's in the air a hundred days in the year, how much booze that is? That's like a thousand dollars a day. Now I'm wondering how many of those little bottles are they letting her take it out in her hand baggage? In fact, well, no wonder she looks embalmed. Yes, she does look involved. <laughs> now, there are other people we have to talk about that are no good. Um, well, let's do. Let's talk about the NAACP, that fat guy, the one from oh, North yeah. Carolina. I call him Bishop Mantitty, William Barber III. <laughs> 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 Please tell people that. He's not the <laughs> black folks. So what, he's so big. Remember he's at the Democratic Party convention? He was bigger than the stage he was on. And... <laughs> And I don't know if it's how much oleo he puts in his hair to be that greasy, you know, but this man is awful. He didn't really serve the black folks in North Carolina. And let me tell the white people, I've got to tell you a dirty secret about these frauds. Well, he served himself first, you can tell. What do you mean served himself first? He locked the door so nobody else could get in. (laughs) It's what these people tell you about. They won't tell you. There's this thing called black liberation theology that they talk about. And they keep using black to push this homosexual or pedophile agenda, and it makes me sick. We've had black gay folks who have in their family. James Baldwin's gay. We loved him. Little Rich is gay. We loved him. Uh, Queen Latifah's gay. We love her. We got gay black people. So what? It's old. If we're the first people that everybody black, oh, we're the first people, then we were the first queens, the first gays, we're the first thieves, we're the first killers. If white folks came last, they were the last ones to learn how to do it. If we came first, we've been doing it longer. Isn't that fair? Okay. Yeah, right. Front of the line. On that final BS, then we were the first ones that did it. Okay. All right. Now that we've established that. The black liberation theology, as explained by one of Reverend Barber's best friends, is that Jesus Christ is a black, homosexual, transgender. And that's Jesus Christ. Uh, Okay, and he wears Air Jesus shoes, but I don't think it's the kiwi fruit up that skirt. I think it's... Now, having said that, look... It was explained to me, you have to define blacks and black liberation theology. So blacks are blacks, women, and homosexuals. And that's why whenever you see that fat dude who's now moving to Washington, God forbid, to lead the poor people's campaign. I guess the poor people will be the transgenders that can't get jobs because folks don't want to work next to someone that they can't figure out who they're dealing with. 
and that's what that guy's up to. But that's what black liberation theology is. Now, that's not what all people consider black liberation, but that's what this guy, Barber, that the liberals are pushing. This is what he believes. And it's coded language. It's like black lives matter. They should be black fags matter. Say what you really mean, okay? Don't don't call it black when George Soros is pushing pedophilia and all this stuff on us. Rosa Parks didn't refuse to give up her seat because she couldn't uh, tongue kiss her white girlfriend on the same row. Martin Luther King wasn't wearing out shoes because he and his white boyfriend couldn't go in the same bathroom. Please. How dare these people do this? These liberals are the worst, nastiest, most vicious, condescending racists. They're worse than the, than, than, than the most bigoted conservative. Is not as bad as they are because the conservative says, hey, look, I don't like you. You live in your neighborhood. I live in mine. The liberal says, oh, I like you. And you know what? All of you should live together in huge sky rises so we don't have to see you. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and they're the same ones who, who fight for this, uh, this Congressional Black Caucus. Did you hear about the uh, Supreme Court case where even Clarence Thomas voted with the, with the, with the more liberal part of the court that it's wrong to set up cong- congressional districts by race? If you notice, nobody black in the Congressional Black Caucus celebrated or issued any real praise because they're all in safe districts set up to give them a captive black voting audience that they don't have to do a damn thing for. They hate us worse than the Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan. Saying, remember I said welfare used to be for life for certain people, and then they went from welfare to work? Well, the Congressional Black Caucus needs to go from welfare to work. They're not working. Oh, hell no. I mean, to me, I some of the police whack people, and perhaps some folks earn getting shot by the cops, but a bunch don't. What's stopping those folks from having a real inquiry on what happens with law enforcement? And I'm not knocking all police, but some. How come those folks can't do it? Because they don't want to. The water. Let's take a drug like Depo-Provera, which causes breast cancer, and they target it for poor and and, and minority women. Why did they Planned Parenthood dump that on these girls? I've gone to, I went to Maxine Waters' office. I had the email. We could do another show on Depo. I hope you will. And, oh, oh I would, I'll would. i send you the email and you can see how I was turned away, Maxine. All I'm saying is this drug is linked to women being up to 16 times more likely to contract AIDS if they use it. We've got a high rate of AIDS in our community. Shouldn't we know that maybe this isn't the best thing? Do you know Maxine Waters' office turned us down? We went and met with them. Forgive me, ladies, I'm not picking on you, but there's some unattractive people in every ethnic group, and they must have picked the least attractive white woman I've seen. I'm telling you, someone that, that came out of the ashes of Nagasaki, Hiroshima, looked better than the woman that she had working in her office. She looked like Broomhilda, who hadn't had her hair shampooed in 10 years. And she was the person in charge of health. To me, I don't think she knew what soap was, but this is who Maxine Waters had tell us that They couldn't even look at what we had. They couldn't even look at what we were trying to tell. But we don't even want to hear the science. Just know, because Planned Parenthood and Emily's List, which, you know, is basically, you know, a a lesbian clearinghouse for the Democratic Party. You know, you have to be like into carpet and hate men and want to kill babies and they'll give you money. Remember, they had that uh, pussy hat march and they had all the black women on stage like they're slaves. Look at the slaves we bought. And they didn't do that for the white women in Congress. They did it for the black women. And they're silly. Maxine Waters. And, and you know what? If you look at her, Barbara Lee looks like the cartoon from The Grinch that stole Christmas. I noticed that. You're right. I did. The heart. Ten small. times too small. Yeah. And so her and, and there are other ones. Are just And uh, Keith Ellison. Oh, my God. The one that's in the Nation of Islam. Look, if you like Farrakhan, you like Farrakhan. Don't lie about it. Don't use the nation to become legitimate with people in the community and then, you know, try to diss them. So, you know, the Jews knifed him. And sometimes the Jews are right on point. This is one time. I'm glad they denied it to him. But the little Latino dude is no better. In fact, I'll just tell you gossip. There's a Barnes and Noble up in Bethesda. And the new Democratic Party leader, DLC leader, Perez, was out with this male. 
when my cousin said hi to him, Perez got angry that he could recognize him. Is it because the guy wasn't his son? Or why would you get mad if someone greeted you and said congratulations and didn't say your name out loud? Is it because you saw him with the man? Maybe. Inquiring minds. Yeah, so we I, know. Yeah, we- you know what I'm saying? Oh, my That's God. What- I just, I, shoot. And D.C., it's, it's just a mess. It's, there's so much more to talk about. I also want to just share with you, going back to the Congressional Black Caucus, well, I just want to say this about John Lewis. Uh, he needs to retire, okay? If you've ever listened to him, in fact, if he, he, he needs some, like some speech enhancement, how could you be a person in Congress all these years and, you know, your speech is worse than a person that's inebriated? Martin Luther King, we are the... And I'm thinking, that's a congressman? I, I mean, I'm telling you, the kids that are cussing listen to hip-hop sound more articulate than this man. Maybe he got hit upside the head too many times in the 60s, even more so. He should be the next star. We should make a movie called Concussion for black folks that got beat up in the 60s by the police <laughs> and study how they function. Or he, he <laughs> fell know? down too many times at the bar. Hmm. Or at, at the uh, glory hole. Oh, my. We're making so many friends tonight, are we not? (laughs) (laughs) I asked Randy about an article I saw uh, about him where it said, Dr. Randy Short gives a provocative opinion on why the NRA is an extension of the KKK. You'll be surprised to see how far back this little incident goes. My understanding is that in the 1870s, in particular, following the presidential election of, of 1868, I don't know if you're aware, but in one county in Louisiana, close to 2,000 blacks were killed in one year. And about 15 to 1,600 were killed in a matter of weeks in just one county in Louisiana. And President Grant, once he got power, wanted to clean that up. And so they got two acts. They're called the Enforcement Acts of 1870 and 1871, are also called the Ku Klux Klan Acts. And they effectively shut the Ku Klux Klan down as a paramilitary terrorist organization in the South. The NRA essentially becomes the vehicle for people to continue to be engaged in learning about guns. And it's, it was used as a place to train people for warfare abroad and warfare at home. One thing I can point out to you that the NRA members, and as well as people in the American Foreign Legions and the Veteran of Foreign Wars, were notorious starting 100 years ago, the 28th of May, in terrorizing blacks in urban areas. In particular, I'm referring to uh, East St. Louis, and which they don't know. It was a community with as many as 20,000 blacks in East St. Louis. And that community was burned to the ground on July 2nd and July 3rd in 1917. They don't have an accurate number of bodies, but if you burn a lot of buildings and you surround people, and there were 20,000 people there, I'm pretty certain you can kill a whole lot of them, plus if you're shooting at them. Are you understanding me? The... The, the low ball number said 40 some odd people killed. There was a numbered number, 300. And even with the 300, they couldn't find everything. And if you're burning people inside of buildings and you don't have bones, do you? So we, we have a very, very problematic uh, history with guns. My grandfather was an NRA member. I'm not against gun ownership. In fact, ownership of guns is real good. If you have the right heart and mind, if you want to be like Dylan Rolfe, where you want to target people because you don't like them and mass kill them, that's a bad gun. If it's a gun for like you ladies, Joy and Star, and some dude puts his hand where it doesn't belong and you whack him, thank God he's face down on the pavement and your dignity and your sanctity as a woman is protected. Um, and I feel the same way. Folks shouldn't be able to prey on people. Or go into their homes. If there's a home invasion, the best thing to do to get them out of your home is to whack them. People should respect each other. I'm a Southerner. I come from a gun culture, but not to hurt people, but to hunt and to protect your family. To the degree that the NRA does that, it's wonderful. 
if there are people involved in this because they wish to hurt other Americans, in reality, they're traitors to America. And re think about it. A lot of people hate us. A lot of people coming here to blow us up. There are all sorts of terrible things that can happen to Americans. And by the way, when the Caribbeans, who are black, some of them selling drugs, killed thousands of Americans, most of them black, these people don't necessarily like me and they don't like you either. When we're shooting and hating each other for the F of it because we don't look alike, that only helps people who would see this whole country destroyed. So whether I like everybody that's different from me, in fact, I don't like a lot of black folks, especially when it's a Congressional Black Caucus, it doesn't mean that I have the right to be uncivil, that I have the right to be violent or to hurt people or take from them. And if I can't respect my neighbor, if law enforcement isn't present, I think you have the right to pull the trigger. I mean, drop a couple of caps on people who are violating your property. What's wrong with that? Well, the you, guns are not the problem. It's the no, people that are the problem. I love guns. Oh, my God. Yeah, for nothing wrong with guns at all. I like guns. They're beautiful. Gold-plated, mm -hmm, like Gaddafi had. Mm -hmm. a, I mean, it's so too, too bad they didn't help in the end. But yeah. I don't have a problem with guns if, if they're for hunting or for ornamental purposes or for security. But if you want to hurt someone or commit a crime or use a gun to rape someone or to extort... That is that is a, that's not the gun. It's the person that's holding it. I seem to remember a uh, Supreme Court uh, ruling on the Second Amendment, and the biggest portion of it spoke about a black man being able to own a gun to keep the racists out of his home. If to me, all facts county massacre. A lot of people are not aware that following the Civil War. There are a lot of people who never liked the idea of blacks not being enslaved. So it wasn't just the Ku Klux Klan. You had the Pell Faces, the Order of the White Camellia, you had the Red Shirts, you had paramilitary groups that went around, killed, terrorized, and brutalized black people. In fact, they'd even have race riots. They weren't race riots. They were massacres. What you'd do is get a group of white men who were well-armed who would push and shove and harass the black males until someone started swinging. And then they pull out their guns and just start mowing people down. You had this happen in New Orleans. You had this happen in Memphis. And what you ended up having was what we call union leagues, where blacks and certain whites would arm themselves, those who are aligned with the Republican Party, to resist racist Democrats. <laughs> Interesting. And, and they would have pitched battles in, in Colfax County, Louisiana in the 1870s there was a pitched battle between Republicans and Democrats and of course the blacks surrendered and many of them were massacred and this went all the way to the Supreme Court so the right for the gun ownership has a lot to do with people saying hey look these folks they don't respect the law they don't see a black person as a human being uh, I was interested in your opinion of Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. This is our opportunity. <laughs> Boss pockets, money from rich contributors. We're not here to free the black community, but to take care of our little Rolls Royces, our yachts. It is our time to put money in our pockets. We're not here for liberation. We, okay. Good enough. <laughs> that was great. That was awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. Amazing how rich they got off of racism and doing nothing to. No, they did something. Okay, let's just do this. There's a conspiracy trial. There's a conspiracy trial on who killed Dr. King. And the U.S. government was found guilty. And there are two people. There was a gay minister named Billy Kyles who died, some people said, from AIDS. They say, I can't prove that one. And Jesse Jackson were two black people who set Dr. helped set Dr. King up for his assassination. Says the conspiracy trial in William Pepper's book, Orders to Kill, that Jesse Jackson helped have Martin Luther King killed. Says the book, not Randy Short. I was in the trial. The King family sued, and they got the information. A man killed Dr. King, but I am 
Somebody. <laughs> but Black people to enrich myself, but I am somebody. Right? So, um, <laughs> so Jesse, I don't hate Jesse. Jesse's daughter is staying in my house. I'm not mad at it, but that's what this thing says that Jesse has something to do with helping set Dr. King up to get killed. He was the only person that was able to get out of Memphis and get to Chicago. And why was he doing action painting with Dr. King's blood on the shirt that he has? Who does stuff like that? Come oh, on. All right. If I, was doing, smoke? if I was doing action painting with JFK's blood, everybody think I was weird and inappropriate. Yeah. Um, so he yeah. has, he's got the shirt with Dr. King's blood on it. I don't know what's he going to do. Get a DNA sample and clone a baby, you know, please. In fact, when he got uh, a girl I went to school with, a woman, he has his daughter just finished college, I think, last year. And I would say, I may not wear a condom, but I am somebody, you know. Uh, Jesse, Je Jesse Jackson has been for Jesse. Um, and by the way, they ruined his son. His son was wearing a wire. A lot of people see Jesse as a snitch. And he was replaced by another snitch, Al Sharpton. Now, if you spoke to one of my friends, they claim that all these people have double and quintuple lives, lots of girlfriends. In fact, it's alleged that Jesse has like babies everywhere. He's sort of like King David, or actually more like King Solomon, but not wise. <laughs> he has the women, but not the wisdom. Sharpton is alleged to have a double life, and his wife was supposedly one way and he was another. I'm not saying this is true, but I was in Cuba uh, 16 years ago, and I met the godmother of Tupac Shakur, Asada Shakur. And Asada told us that Al Sharpton set her up and her group for assassination with the New Jersey Highway Patrol. I'm not saying that this is what happened, but this is what the woman who was able to escape from the United States and got to Cuba said that Al Sharpton set them up. He's alleged to have some TV set with a listening device. So he's recognized as a snitch, okay? And so a lot of people don't respect him. And so when you see Al Sharpton in New York, they have to be careful. I call him Reverend Crapdon instead of Sharpton. He also betrayed people. Like there's a rape case, a Tawana Bravo case. Most people were told that the black teenage girl was lying on the police. It's not true. And Sharpton was paid to betray this rape teenager that he's been betraying ever since. So a lot of what you see is so-called black leaders. They don't represent black people. They represent the 1% of white people who don't like anybody. They just happen to be the black faces that work for the 1% that keep a certain constituency under control. I'll give you an instance. Did you hear about the woman that got raped at Al Sharpton's birthday party, I think, within the last two years? And uh, nothing was, I mean, basically, the, I think it's uh, Sharpton's attorney, who's Jewish, was one of the people that the woman accused. This was Sharpton, a, an attorney on Sharpton's staff, allegedly was raped at his apartment, and uh, he didn't get involved. Remember the woman that got shot in front of the White House or over by the uh, Capitol? Yes. In the back? Oh, yeah. You know her sister worked for Al Sharpton? That I didn't. Did you ever hear Al Sharpton say, why do you have to shoot a car full of bullets when the baby's and the, and the child? She, the woman didn't have a gun. A lot of people mention that Sharpton didn't, didn't have anything to say about that whole incident. No, he didn't. Although... His one of his key people, that was her sister. Mm, Isn't that no. interesting? I'll do one better. There's a man named Reverend Abrigo. Reverend Abrigo runs the National Action Network, which is Al Sharpton's group called NAN. I call it SCAM. Anyway, the director's name Reverend Abrigo. Reverend Abrigo's wife, daughter, and granddaughter have side effects from using Depo Prevera. When Abrigo reached out to Sharpton to ask him to take the stand about this dangerous medication that's cancer-forming, contributes to diabetes, anemia, uh, birth defects, breast cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, heart attack, stroke, hairy asus where you have body like grizzly, a grizzly bear with so much hair on it, all these things and more that come from Depo Provera. And Al Sharpton 
for his one of his favorite chapters here in D.C., Al Sharpton refused to say anything about it. Recognized as a snitch, Al Sharpton uh, recommend. In fact, he supported Bratton, the police chief in New York, who's notorious for his brutality. Remember the Stewart case in Boston when white man shot his wife, said blacks did it. I was living in Boston. They terrorized the black community for oh, weeks. White guy, yeah. Matthew, Matthew Stewart, committed suicide. Okay. Sharpton, remember they had the uh, Cinco de Mayo back in 2007, and they beat up all the Hispanic people for no reason at all. They just started beating their behinds and shooting them with rubber bullets and such and beanbags. Mm -hmm. Bratton was the chief of police in, in Los Angeles. Wherever Bratton goes, police brutality goes. Who recommends that Bratton come to New York and be chief of police or who supports it? Al Sharpton. Mm. And oh, let's do some more about Al Sharpton. <laughs> Al Sharpton supported de Blasio. Let's talk about Mayor de Blasio. I'm not an expert, but I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Masitza Bepe. Mm. It's when you circumcise the baby and the Jewish tradition, the mohel or the, the priest sucks the blood off of the circumcised penis of the baby. That's a fact. Oh, yeah. I'm not being okay. angry at anyone. It's such a thing. Several Jewish babies got herpes out of the mouths of the priest. Oh. And died. Yep. yep. Mayor, oh Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg said, sorry, I'm Jewish. We don't need to have babies. There's got to be another way to get the blood off the penis versus sucking it. And I, I said, you can't do it anymore. Okay, I'm the mayor. The Jewish community was outraged. How dare him? We've got to suck oh. those penises or you won't take our rights from us, oh. right? And I went up to New York, and I gave a speech to the United Africa Movement, and I said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you what's going on. I said, De Blasio is going to be the next mayor of New York City. I'm going to tell you who's going to win. I said, I'm going to tell you why. De Blasio, I mean, really, did you see the little crackhead wife he had? I mean, he looked like he found in a homeless shelter. Exactly. And then he had with the big broccoli afro that looks like it's never been combed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Got the, I said, you know what? I'm sorry. No Italian. I know Italians to a degree. No conservative, Catholic, Italian, or Greek. They don't mind getting in bed with black folks but because they're kind of on the dark side of whiteness, so they can't be aggressive and be too ethnic because, you know, there's some Italians as dark as us. There's some Greeks as dark as us. So they have to really let people know we're white, you know, you know don't stop <laughs> us. They're not going to get with black people who don't have a lot of class. They're not. Okay. You'll, I'm serious. I'm telling you straight. So I said, based on what I know about interracial couples, I said, you know what? De Blasio is Jewish. That's the only kind of white dude that would pick a black broad like that. I'm serious. I mean, uh, I'm serious. He looks like Count Chocula with the Afro wig on. I mean, come on. I said it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we're we glad you just, did. <laughs> we <laughs> just not to shock her with the wig. Laugh. It's, so, it's, so she, oh, I said that de Blasio is probably Jewish with an Italian name. I can't prove it, but that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And I said that de Blasio is going to endorse allowing them to suck baby penises again to get the support of the <laughs> Orthodox Jews. And that's how he's okay. going to win. Uh, he's going to win by letting oh. the Rabbi suck the baby's uh, penises. That happened. Mm. The agreement to let them suck the babies happened the same night I told them this is what was going to happen. I don't live in New York. I just have to see a paper. So isn't it Blasio mayor? Yes. And when he became mayor, they're sucking baby penises like they used to. And they're going to get above their pedophile stuff. The, the Blasio and, and, and Sharpton are the best of friends. In fact, I remember reading a story about that. There was one Jewish rabbi who boasted about having uh, done the ritual on 50,000 boys. He wasn't one of them that had herpes, was he? Um, how do you know? Uh, exactly. I'm just thinking, I'm not telling people what they can or cannot do. Um, I'm not even there, but I'm just convinced. Isn't there another way? <laughs> Can't they do Is there any other way? And why the gauze? They, I don't know. Cotton, cotton why, gauze, maybe. Why the fight to to have it? Why are you threatening people? People, so Bloomberg, so De Blasio let them suck. 
and who's friends with de Blasio Sharpton. And, and so Sharpton, he's interesting. By the way, remember a few years ago, Sharpton owed the IRS about five, six million dollars. Remember mm-hmm. the West yeah. Games in jail after he paid the IRS off? Yeah. Why did they throw Wesley Snipes in jail when he didn't owe, but let Sharpton stay out when he did? It's because Sharpton is the the Uncle Tom fire department chief. Yeah, he is their tool. And we were going to take it a little deeper now and speak about the satanic ritual abuse of children. And Randy was discussing the black pedophile cases. Oh, yes, Lord. In fact, I hope everybody has their black leadership air sickness bags available. Please open now. The thing that's really had me pissed, the uh, liberals and with the Democrats, is that Donald Trump came into office with the mandate to protect the children of America. And while they've been talking about the Russians and everything else, in fact, uh, I like Russians, especially the black Russian. I heard you can drink those. I'm really sick and tired of them mudding the waters because this man's daughter, Ivanka, the one thing I do agree with her on, says that our children should be safe. And we have a pedophilia epidemic in this country, and it crosses all lines. In fact, one of the pastors of the largest uh, Pentecostal denomination among blacks in New England Reverend Foxworth was busted trying to get sex off of a boy off of back page. They busted him. Oh, praise the Lord for his many blessings. Okay. Uh-huh. Please, please smash the key and lock the door. Never let him out. We have so many freaks and tramps and predators and sex trafficking is off the chain in our community. And we need these people jailed. Okay. We need them locked up. We, we need to have them busted, okay? Amen. And, and, and it exists everywhere. You know, Reverend Ike, the, the minister that used to tell people about wealth and success, he trained, he was a pedophile. He got ran out of Boston and moved to New York because a parent whose son had been molested came to church to shoot him, and he jumped out of the stained, stained glass window of the church and, and, and got to New York. We, we have a problem. Trust me, you want to see some people that can't lie? Black leadership. Oh, my God. Just be for real. You know, Martin Luther King, he was a hoe, but he was a good hoe. I love Dr. King. Dr. King tried to do something. These other people, everybody since him, in fact, you know, they seem to only shoot, shoot the good ones. Jesse and Sharpton, they have such long self lives. Whenever you see black leaders on the scene too long, they're probably not good people. Now let's talk about pedophilia some more. You know, you know that you know that you know that uh, in the black community, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and we say the National Association for the Abortion of Colored People, AKA the NAACP, do you know that they're part of the covert agenda to make pedophilia legal? Most are not aware that the most powerful national board member of the NAACP is Rabbi Saperstein, who performed the first gay marriage, who's also a head of the Center for American Progress, started by who? John Podesta, the pedophile in chief for the Hillary Clinton thing. Okay. See how this stuff is overlapping? Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. And you're down in Florida, right, Bill? There's a little nasty black congressman, the one that's greedy, that always wants to raise, and I don't know anything he's done, except he wanted people who didn't like pedophiles who committed crimes against him to be charged in the hate crime statute. Uh, Alcee Hastings. Right, right. He was the one that proposed hate crime protection for pedophiles. I did not know that. It's insane. Where are the white politicians to colonize black people to save us from black pedophiles and liberals? I mean, you know, I was in Iran and I had a sign. I miss white presidents when I thought about Obama. I'll send you a picture of it. I was <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Oh, Lord. Like this. Oh, my God. Bring, bring them back. Lordy, Lordy. Let me tell you. But we do have a problem. And America has a problem. In fact, you know that Pizzagate, 
Remember the Pizza Gate or Pedo Gate? Remember that black Reverend King, the one out in Omaha, the one that was involved with uh, the <laughs> Boys Town, the one oh, yeah. who's right. and all the kids are. Yeah. Are you understanding me? Yep. And mm -hmm. connected to different people. So I mean, the mastermind of this pedophile ring, the, going way back, is King. I mean, I could tell something was wrong with him. His hair was bigger than Aretha's, and he's <laughs> and he couldn't sing. You've seen that that, that video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like he's carrying a note. No, he stole Sophia Loren's uh, sunshades, and he's <laughs> singing with this big hair like Aretha with Sophia Loren's shades on. That would have been cause for me to to watch him. <laughs> so, so we're in this too, and trust me, they prey on our community, and they're people who are helping them. So I mean, the sex trafficking is at an all-time high in our community. Remember our little no good mayor here? She's the one that looks like Arsenio without the mustache. There are hundreds of children missing, and she says it's not that bad. But then again, she's a lesbian who doesn't have children. What does she care about kids? Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. and she does look like Arsenio. He's actually prettier. I mean, this is it's just real. I mean, we have this real problem. So where you have all these kids missing, a lot of times these are urban areas. And you know who you'll find never says anything about it. In fact, there's a black woman congressman. I have to talk about her. She's no good. Karen Bass. She looks like Uncle, Uncle uh, Fester with a small Afro wig on. <laughs> yes. She's oh, supposed to look out for children. You'll never see one frigging thing done. By Karen Bass for children. In fact, they need to take the consonant off her last name. The first one. <laughs> yeah, it's so typical of our politicians where Hillary is all for the women, all for the women, yet she takes all this money from Saudi Arabia and all these countries that just brutalize women. I mean, she brutalizes women that tell on Bill. I mean, how is she different? Come on, look at Hillary Clinton. I always say to people, that Hillary Clinton looks like James Cagney with bigger hair. Okay. <laughs> you got a great eye, sir. You know, since 1965, they're about, the United States Agency for International Aid and Development has been pushing all kinds of insane, unsafe birth control and devices all over Africa, which is 10 times more deadly than the yes. FDM. Okay, and they've done this on purpose. So, the Dalcon Shield, the things that kill women here, do you know they're still selling those in Africa? In fact, they make deals where when you can insert a, an IUD or whatever, they don't even give you a different applicator. They'll give you one applicator for every hundred IUDs. Sticking the dirty thing in all the different women's vaginas to put the stuff in, which means they're spreading disease deliberately. Hmm? Oh, our vaginas. Well, to me, <laughs> joy, joy, joy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know that was a dirty word. Uh, I, no, I was, not a dirty word. It's one of the best things that can happen. I was in the vagina monologues, and I know all about it. Well, all I can say to you is instead of saying peace be upon him after you say Muhammad, they should say peace be upon after you say a vagina. I mean, you know, yeah. this is real talk. I had an opportunity the 5th of May in 2005 to be working in Congressman Hastert's office and nasty Albert Gonzalez and drunk Nancy Pelosi were there. That's the first time I saw her. In fact, she looks like a mannequin that, um, or she looks like uh, somebody from Vesuvius from a stone, like someone got drunk and they were cast in stone by the ash. Mm -hmm. And anyway, that was my first exposure to Nancy. But I saw Congressman has to talk to this young white kid, and I thought he was going to throw him on the desk and just do it right there. It wasn't what he said, but it was a feeling. It made me so sick. I went to a room and started screaming. But then I said, you know, the Capitol Police are going to shoot me. So I got myself together and I demanded that I be let off my contract. And I went home and I told my, my godfathers that the Speaker of the House is a pedophile. He rapes children. And I hope they don't know. I know they'll probably kill me. And I don't want to die. So let me tell you, I said this in 2000, May 5th, 2005. I said it would take about 10 years 
for it to come out on Haston, but I'm right. I got his ass. He's a pedophile. You know, he got news came out in May 2015. Ten years later, like I said, and he's in jail now. But Nancy Pelosi and him got along really well. Well, now, you know, Nancy Pelosi, right after Pizzagate came out, she was one on the list as being in the inner circle of that. uh, Podesta. These are the main people attacking Donald Trump. Yes, it is. Uh, Mm -hmm. And look at McCain. He looks like a snapping turtle. I mean, really. Has anyone else heard that Nancy Pelosi owned a pizza parlor? Yeah, Goat Hill. Goat Hill? Right. Yes. For God's sake. For Baphomet. Well, she looks like a goat. No, no. I like goats. Goats look better than her. Their goats are nice. They are. It's like a puffer fish that's had (laughs) one too many. No, that's John McCain. The puppet fish. Yeah, he is a puppet fish. That's right. Okay. I'm just thinking that this pedophilia, the reason that they're fighting Trump is when he said he was going to have the pedophiles executed, Mm -hmm. that's when the media and all really went crazy. You go Mm -hmm. back, you find out that someone saw a tweet that Trump said, do something where they would have the pedophiles executed. He's threatened the deep state. And that's yes. why they cannot yeah. give him. Uh, for many things he's done, but the pedophilia stuff is something else. By the way, did you see uh, Obama? Forgive me, I guy talked about him. <laughs> Obama's <laughs> vacation. It wasn't a vacation. It was a gaycation. Uh, they left the White House with the California yeah. with a, a gay Latino couple, right? Mm-hmm. Then he right, was, right. And then, who's been a gay rights advocate since he was 15, 16 years old. And who is his neighbor? Jeffrey Epstein. Right. Okay. Oh, By the way, who's the Secretary of Labor? Acosta from Florida who gave Epstein the sweetheart deal and didn't let the parents go after him. That's Trump's Secretary of Labor. Trump made a mistake oh. Acosta. You'll see. Mm, you know, yes. and why you know though, God. I have to say, Randy, I have seen Trump setting traps. And so... He knows how to weed them out. It's to get him in close and set him up. So let, right. let's just wait and see because he's already gotten a few. You know, Sessions looks like Heinrich Himmler without a mustache with a Willy Wonka Oompa Loompa wig on. And no glasses. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why he looks like Heinrich Himmler, but he is kind of super racist. You know, I call him the magic clansman. I love the immigration stuff. I love it, love it, love it. But to me... I'm sorry. I mean, your name is Beauregard, middle name, Jefferson Davis. Beauregard. If you're trying to live the Civil War again, you realize <laughs> that mostly white people died. We don't need a Civil War in this country. We want to be a Civil War, and it's anything like the last one. It's going to be a whole lot of, I mean, millions and millions of people. Oh, yeah. It won't yeah. just be uh, Cousin Pookie that Obama doesn't like. Oh, right. and I, I lost track. Obama then went from... Richard Branson, who lives right next to uh, Orgy Island, to stay yes. with, with, with David Geffen, who's also gay, mm-hmm. on his yacht. Now, come on, ladies, if you had a man and he kept taking you to gay events, how would you feel? And if he called me Michael and didn't retract it, and my name is Michelle? Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's a couple times. a few times, right. Oh, I feel like talking like Obama. Let me talk like Obama for a second. Okay. I enjoy that. So, Bill, you're, you're up to no good. <laughs> I was the best president you ever had. I didn't do anything for black people. I set the gay people free. I let the Muslims kill each other. I, and all you do is complain. What, 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 what more would you like me to do? Now, if you've got a plan, you can put it on my desk. I promise I'll look at it. Now, look. <laughs> What Michelle and I do is sometimes she gets on top of them. We have presents, mm-hmm. sex toys. We get gifts. We use them. We open them up. And this is a great country because you can be whatever you want. I can be a woman. I can be a man. And this is what's great about this country. Being president, the greatest thing about being president is lying to the American people because they're so stupid. You can tell them you're for peace and start wars. You can tell them that the country's recovered and people aren't employed. You can tell them you're a Christian, be a Muslim. You can tell them you're an American citizen, be born in Kenya. This is the greatest job. I'm sorry I had to leave. If I had had my weight, we would have had a coup. 
then I could stay president, like we do in Africa. God bless America. And, and you're so overjoyed that uh, he's a neighbor of yours now, huh? <laughs> no. Oh, my God, no. Oh, <laughs> dear, dear. Randy, not a good day. There's nope. a wall. He put a wall up. It's okay. The exactly. <laughs> house that the Jewish mafia guy Resco got from in Chicago. Why don't you stay in Chicago since you hate being black? You can watch the black kids get shot from your mansion window. Oh. I mean, you can have your own free snuff porn. Oh, dear. Mm. They're afraid that there's certain black folks who are mad. In fact, what you'll never hear is how many black people voted for Trump. No. They won't tell you that like 22 percent of the blacks in, in, in Milwaukee voted for Trump. Blacks in Cleveland voted for Trump. That's what Hillary and them are mad at. The blacks in, in Detroit voted for Trump. And I think they stole votes from him in D.C., Mm -hmm. Donald Trump got the lowest number of votes of any Republican that's run for president since Washingtonians had the right to vote starting in 1964. I mean, Trump did worse than McCain and Romney. Are you effing kidding me? Trump did better than Romney. The, these people are so angry that people voted for Trump. Is Trump perfect? No. Is Trump like a socialist Democrat? No. But Trump was talking stuff that a lot of people could connect to. Has he surrounded himself with billionaire type folks? Yes. Is he paying off favors? Yes. Does Kushner look like, you know, he's a male prostitute? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another one. Uh, well, and his office is 666. Oh, God. I hope he has more than a six in his pants. No wonder uh, Ivanka's <laughs> always too dead. I'm, yeah, I'm messing with him. But Kusher, I mean, when you see him, pants are tight. Devil says it. You know who he reminds me of? A young Tom Cruise. Oh, cocky. Em emphasis on the last name. And um, <laughs> doesn't he remind you of, of Risky Business? Remember he had the prostitution service? Oh, in the 80s? That's right, right. He looks like Tom Cruise with Risky Business. I wonder risky if that's business, right. around his underwear. Um, it's and like, I would like people to know where they can find you, any websites, mm -hmm. et cetera. Because, yeah, uh, I said, I really knew nothing about you until Joanne and Jimmy told me that you should be a guest on the show. And I thanked them earlier today for making the suggestion. I hope I don't cost you any of your audience. Oh, hell no. And, you know, I, I you, we have a, about a minute and a half left. And I did want to say one thing. Star, I did not want to use the words angry black man, but sir, I'm an angry white man, just as angry as you are an angry, angry black man. And that's why I do this radio show. The last minute is yours, sir. Well, if they want to reach me, the best thing is Twitter. I'm Randy Short on Twitter. So it's Twitter at Randy Short. I am Randy Short on Facebook, but that's filled up. So Twitter's the best thing, and but that's the main thing. And just Twitter's the best place to catch me. I mean, if you want to write me, I'm wrandyshort at gmail. God, I got a book coming out, and I'm writing another book, and and I have a GoFundMe under Randy Short. I think Dr. Randy Short. Yeah, I'm trying to go all over the place to do stuff. So I don't know if if you think it's good, get ready. I'm hoping. And I hope that y'all do this. We need to do some political satire. I want to challenge some folks to have us go around and really just talk about stuff honestly, satirically, and pick at the crooked people in the country. They're letting everybody down. And they think if they can make everybody hate each other and kill each other, that the pigs have taken everything and the idiots help them take from the rest of us, that they'll laugh all the way to the bank. We have to stick together and figure out how we can get along. It, it does matter that you get along. I love you, Will. Bye, all. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. <laughs>